Hi, I'm gonna spend a, uh, a few minutes giving a demonstration of the power of Salonis in the context of a procurement uh, scenario. Um, so procurement is pretty challenging for many organizations, things like master data discrepancies and maverick buying and challenging supplier lead times or issues with on-time delivery. Present it as, and make it quite a, a challenging area. And Salonis can help in three ways. It can effectively shine a light on what is truly happening across procurement process and then give a, a root cause understanding of why issues may be occurring. Once you understand those issues, Salonis can then help to plug these execution gaps. So if I share my screen, what we can see here is a, uh, an example of a, a, a typical dashboard that you would get from Salonis. So customer here has identified three different KPIs around productivity, supplier reliability, and compliance in the context of uh, procurement. Um, we can see here some kind of key KPIs, to what extent they're achieving their best in class, their targets, um, what sort of potential they could be making if they improve their, for instance, no touch rate, and also examples of trends over time. Now, the power of Salonis is where you start to be able to understand the process. So in this instance, we can see here how a process is typically running. So we can see that a, a, a purchase is made, a requisition is made, and ends up with the invoice being cleared. What's interesting, however, this is only touching 45% of cases. So only 506,000 out of the 1.1 million purchase orders are following this flow. If I start to open this up a bit, I can see that there are some deviations. So just looking at the top three, for instance, on the, uh, the first one, where 148,000 cases are going, 13% of all cases, they are bypassing the creating the purchase requisition and jumping straight to creating the purchase order. Now, this may be for innocent reasons, but it could be maverick purchase. It could be something fraudulent. It could be basically ensuring that management approval and governance is not taking place. If we look here around the changing price, I mentioned at the beginning, things like master data discrepancies. Now, this could be issues in the, uh, the, the ERP system, it could be um, out of date uh, brochures, whatever it may be. Not only is it causing a bit of an issue in terms of the amount of, uh, the amount of uh, uh, purchase orders that are following this path, but we can also see through Salonis what it actually means in terms of adding time to the process. So we can see actually by putting in a change price, we're putting an additional nine days on the process just doing my maths, yeah, additional nine days on the process. Um, now this can have real cost implications. If you think about the initial dashboard where we we're talking about the uh, desire to comply to, uh, to, to various KPIs, putting in an additional eight days or nine days, can have some real implications. If I start to expand this out as well, you can see that actually there's a real spaghetti that starts to be created. If I open it up to all 100% of cases, you can actually see what that really, really looks like. And this is actually replicated across many, many organizations. Now, if I start to click on some of the key KPIs, look at the productivity. So as we've just seen, we can actually understand what is going on. We get this X-ray vision of what is going on in an enterprise process. Then on the right-hand side, we can start to see some of the reasons for this. So things like, for instance, with productivity, what are the frequent manual activities? Well, changing price is a big indication, a done order or confirmation, block purchase orders. I can start to as well drill down by material, by vendor, by material group, whatever it may be, I can start to really get some low level understanding of what is going on. I can start to actually get visibility and understanding of what the cost is of the purchase order, when it's touched, when it's non-touched. If I do click on, for instance, the change price here, so I just look at the actual process around changing the price. Well, what implication does that have around no touch rate? Well, it's brought it down. Same with things like supplier reliability. If I want to look at supplier reliability, I can start to get a view of what is actually going on in practice. So I can see the on-time delivery rates, the late delivery, the early delivery. I can actually understand as well some of the reasons for late delivery. So for, in this instance, 44% of cases are because of wrong internal planning parameters. Um, I can actually start to actually drill down, for instance, into the Umbrella Corporation, which has a big early delivery rate. I want to actually understand a bit of detail behind Umbrella, why they're doing it, doing what they're doing. I've got that power to do so. 
Same with all the things. I've got a non-compliance um, screen here, for instance, so I can actually understand things like that Maverick, Maverick um, purchasing that I talk, talked about, jumping straight into the create the purchase order. If I actually look here, we can see that we've got a whole different thing straight away in terms of how things are working. Same with day pay, days payable out, outstanding. Um, where it starts to get interesting though, is I can then start to drill down even in even further detail to actually understand the reasons for this. If I import, for instance, if, I have a, uh, if I'm a customer that has my own uh, best practice process map developed in Aris or Visio or Blueworks Live, I can import that into, uh, to, into Slowness. And then I can actually compare to what extent the system in practice is complying with that process model. And I can look at where the KPIs may be failing, where there is violation of KPIs, I can then actually, if I wanted to, drill down on this receiving order confirmation, which is taking place in 15% of cases. I can look at those details in detail. I can actually then start to perform some root cause analysis. So I've got this massive power of truly understand what is going on. Now, what's interesting with all this, you know, as I said at the beginning, I've got visibility of what is going on. I've now got root cause understanding of what the issues are. What I can also do is plug some of these execution gaps by clicking this button, for instance, the taking action. Now, in terms of things like the price change optimization, if there is an issue with price change, or in fact, the Maverick processes, let's look at that. So Maverick processes, we've developed here a very simple workflow process. This is something that doesn't need to be done by IT. This could be done very easily. Um, and effectively, what we're doing with this is basically making some decisions. So Salonis is awesome for thousands of thousands of customers that are using Salonis in a procurement pace, basis. We've been able to get some understanding of how these things should be working. So Salonis through AI and through business rules is able to identify where Maverick purchases are taking place. Once we've done that, we can actually make a decision based on purchasing value. And that value isn't numeric, it's whether it's a specific employee or a vendor that's creating this problem. We can then have a split and then decide whether to block the requisitioner. If we do block the requisitioner, we can automatically remove their access through procurement. We don't need to log into SAP, Salonis will do it for us. And then we can trigger off an automatic notification to the key stakeholders and ensure that the Maverick purchaser is enrolled in mandatory training. Um, it could be that actually there's a bigger issue here and that the manager has to decide on the next steps and removes the access to the procurement and informs the vendor. It could be the vendor is not following a proper process as well. If I want to change this, if I want to actually add my own steps, so I might want to add a, a, a bot in place to actually trigger an automated process. Very easy for me to do so. If I have a look at this action engine as well, this is what a user will be typically looking for. So these are various tasks that have been sent to the user. So if I look at the Maverick purchases, as an example, the, the user is actually being sent a task to do something about this. And it's being presented all the information. So Salonis has pulled back from the backend systems, the appropriate requisition number, the order value, it's talked about the issue, and then effectively the user can decide what to do whether to contact the vendor to escalate the Maverick purchase, reject the payment of the invoice, whatever that may be. So I've tried to show the three things that Salonius is addressing. First of all, the ability to actually understand what is going across enterprise processes. Secondly, to be able to actually understand why things are failing, what the issues are, why there are, why there are issues. And then thirdly, I've shown how Salonius can help actually do something about this.